we are living now in the time of the Acts of the Apostles. No, that doesn't mean we're living in the year like 35 or whatever. But we're living in a time right after Jesus' resurrection, right after Jesus' ascension into heaven, and right after the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. This is sort of the new period where the church is. So if we're living in the time of the Acts of the Apostles, meaning nothing theologically has changed since Pentecost, we should be able to do everything that is happening in the Acts of the Apostles. By saying the name of Jesus Christ, we can cast out demons. By saying the name of Jesus Christ, people can be saved from their sins. By saying the name of Jesus Christ and calling upon his name, the blind can see, the lame can walk, and the sick can be healed. That is a radical thing. Do we actually believe that that can happen? Do we believe that the Lord can do that through us, weak human beings that we are? In the Acts of the Apostles, the disciples, those followers of Jesus, who no longer had Jesus with them anymore, were able to do great things by simply trusting in the Holy Spirit, inviting him into their hearts, and really, truly believing it. And when they truly, really believed it, and they knew the Holy Spirit was working, they could do great things for the name of Jesus. They could do great things. Do we have that same faith? Do we have the same faith that those disciples had that walked into a town not knowing anybody and said, you should know Jesus Christ because he's going to save you. Actually, he already has. You just need to accept him. Just with bold courage, recklessness. How different our world would look if every one of Jesus' disciples a.k.a. us Christians, us believers, had the same faith as those apostles and those disciples, those first few men and women that followed Jesus. The people in the Acts of the Apostles changed the face of the world, and there were just a few of them. Could you imagine our world if we had that courage, that faith, and we were willing to put our reputation, our, uh, our own desires and feelings aside, even letting go of our attachment to life itself, and said, I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I don't care. That's what I'm called to do as a Christian. How crazy and weird and awesome would our world look if we were able to have that same faith? I am in no way accusing anyone because I am also not quite there with my faith. But I think the readings are a challenge to us and the liturgical season that we're in right now should also give us encouragement and faith. Right now in the liturgical season, as we're sort of following along in the Gospels and the readings, Jesus has been raised from the dead. Praise God. That's awesome. That's huge. That means everything that Jesus said while on earth before he died was true. If he can say, hey, um, in three days I'm going to be uh, back from the dead, and then it actually happens, I'd be willing to bet everything else he said was going to be true as well. And he says in the gospel today, which is before he dies... He says, I will give you another advocate to be with you always. And as we know in the Acts of the Apostles, that advocate, the Holy Spirit, is present with those apostles and those disciples, and he's still with us now. Jesus also says in the same gospel, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. God will be present in your life. He's not leaving us alone. He's present with us. If we can simply believe in the truths that Jesus says in the gospel, 
even if we just believe the things that he says in this gospel. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, I will send an advocate to you. And he does. I will not leave you orphans. I remain in you. I will send you an advocate. If we just know in our heart of hearts those facts, those truths, our life should be radically different. I'm speaking for myself as well. As a prime suspect of not having full faith in Jesus Christ and not really giving my whole heart and soul to him. But I'm called to do that. So this is a challenge for me as I'm hearing it to say, okay, I need to trust that God the Father, Jesus Christ will not leave me abandoned because he's sending me the advocate. He's not going to leave me alone. Sometimes I feel alone, but I'm never alone when the Holy Spirit is with me. And if I believe that, if I love Jesus Christ, I should keep his commandments. All of these truths are written on our heart, but I think we really just need to re-listen to them and recommit them to our heart. That everything that Jesus said was real. And the season we celebrate now is proof of that. Jesus said, I'm going to raise from the dead for your sake. I died so that you would have eternal life. And when I come back from the dead, it will be to prove to you that I did die for your sins. I died for your soul so that your soul could be with me forever. And in the meantime, before you get to me forever in heaven, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. His disciples didn't realize this yet. In this point in the gospel, this is before Jesus died, before his passion, before his resurrection, before his ascension, and before Pentecost. They didn't know what he meant by the advocate. Maybe they were thinking like his cousin or something would just be, yeah, I'm Jesus' advocate. I'm his buddy. But no, he sends the Holy Spirit. They didn't know who that was. But their lives are forever changed at Pentecost when they actually encounter the advocate. I pray that this Pentecost, which is in what, two weeks? Two, two, two weeks, good. Get my dates messed up. I pray that in two weeks, when we celebrate Pentecost this year, that our lives, like the disciples, will be radically changed forever. And we can no longer go back to our old way of life. We can no longer be like St. Peter, who's like, well, Jesus is gone. I guess I'll go fishing. No, 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 no. I can't just go back to my old way of life. I will go fishing, but that's whatever. I pray that this Pentecost, we will realize the truth of what Jesus has been saying to us before his passion, before his death, before his resurrection, we will believe it, take it to heart, and we will know that the advocate of Jesus Christ, a.k.a. the Holy Spirit, is really, truly, actually present in our lives. I hope that we can realize it in a new way, and I hope that our lives will be changed forever because of it. I said a couple weeks ago, talking about the pandemic, I hope we don't go back to normal. Now, I don't, I'm not saying, I hope, you know, your businesses don't open up. That's not what I meant. But I hope that we don't just go back to business as usual and we sort of take the church and take Jesus Christ for granted. I pray that our lives will be forever changed and we can't go back to normal that after the shenanigans of the last two months and the shenanigans that is Jesus Christ in our lives will change us forever. So in the next two weeks, in these two weeks leading up to it, I invite you all to just pray a simple prayer, inviting the Holy Spirit into your heart in a deeper way so that he can change you forever for the good. This simple prayer is beautiful. 
and I say it all the time. Come, Holy Spirit. Just a simple inviting the Holy Spirit to be in my heart. He knows what's going on in my mind. I don't need to explain it. Come, Holy Spirit, you know, there's this one person in my life that's really frustrating. Um, you, you know who he is. Um, yeah, uh, could you just come and just make him a better person or make me a better person? Just say, come, Holy Spirit. He knows what's going on. He knows how to help you. He knows how to change your heart so that you can receive him in a deeper way and you can be Jesus Christ to that person or in that situation or whatever. I pray that we will never be the same when things go back to normal and after Pentecost. I invite you to just simply pray quietly in your heart or out loud praise in the name of Jesus but say come Holy Spirit invite the Holy Spirit into your heart today for the rest of your life but especially in these two weeks inviting him to just change your heart forever so that we will not go back to normal we won't go back to the way things were but our lives will be positively forever changed Come, Holy Spirit.